Hey guys, this is Jason, and I wanted to do a tutorial on how to use Angular, UI Router, Animate.css to, uh, well, and SAS to animate different states, different views coming in and out. So you can see here that if I click a button, I've got a view that comes in. Yes, it's an app in progress, but you can see if I hit the browser back and forward buttons, that we've got some nice ugly animation happening. So one of the problems on, or why I think this is so hard is because you really are having, there's a, it is kind of complex and there's a lot of DOM manipulation going on and you have to, and there's also this convention that you have to understand. So I'm going to try and distill it down for something very simplistic uh, for you. And we're going to cover a lot of different stuff, uh, but you know what, take your time, rewind the video and I'll touch on all the topics. Okay, first thing you need to know is that there is this library called animate.css and it here it is and all you need to know about this is it's just a CSS file and there's nothing special about the CSS file Let's bring it up right here it's just straight CSS but let me point out the really important things here there is an animated class and all it's really doing is setting an animation duration uh, duration and the fill mode just means that it's going to play once. And that is what it does, is it just applies uh, really how long that animation is going to be. Then it, what it does is it sets up some keyframes, uh, for instance, and it does it for all the different kind of vendor prefixes. But what you really need to understand is that it's really just saying, um, you know, for any given one, here's Pulse, for example, at 0%, this is what it's going to be at 50%. That's what it's going to be at, you know, and you can create as many stops as you want. But that's what this keyframe, aka timeline, whatever you want to call it, is is doing. And then all you do in your CSS is you just apply it. So if you come down here and say, take a look at, uh, here we go, flash. So you can see that for Flash, it's going to load up that particular timeline. And yes, it's got vendor prefixes, but all it's doing is saying, hey, use this particular animation keyframe timeline and you add that I called Flash. And so somewhere in here, you'll see that there's a keyframes called Flash, you know, it's like that, and it'll specify the stops. And that's how it animates. And so in order to use this library, you're going to add the class of animated to an element and then the name like flash or fade in up and then as soon as that CSS kicks in on that element that animation will play that's all that this is doing and there's a lot of stuff in here because it's got lots of different animations and all the vendor prefixes and stuff but it's as simple as that you have animated you have the keyframes for whatever it's called like wobble in this case and you've got um, then the actual animation being applied to whatever that name is. So to use it, you know, just like in the documentation, you're going to apply those two things to an element and it'll make it move. So we're going to take advantage of these. Now you don't have to use these. You could make your own in the exact same way. It doesn't matter, but that's effectively what I've done here. So in your index file, or in this case, this index file, you've got a single view container called main. And the important thing to note on main is that I have applied this, these rules. I'm basically saying that you're going to have some nice, crazy, long, just transition. Now here's why this is important. Angular is going to inspect this class when it transitions the view. And it's going to say, there's a class of main. Is there any CSS applied to main, specifically in the realm of a CSS transition? And it's going to figure out how long that transition is. And what it's going to do is it's going to say, there is some CSS that is being applied to this particular view container. And so I'm going to attach CSS classes to that view container in and apply those classes for the exact duration that's specified. So here's what's going to happen. When there is a state change, it's going to look at that view container. Oh, it's called main. I'm going to look for any CSS applied to main. 
and I'm going to look for any transitions, and let's forget the vendor pre prefixes for now, but look for a transition for that class, look at the duration, and apply a class of ng-enter to that container. That's what it's going to do. Once that transition is done, then it's going to remove this. When you do that transition again, uh, it's going to apply ng-leave. Now here's the really confusing part. Because what I just said, if you're really following along, shouldn't make sense. You're saying both when you, it's going to apply both ng-enter and ng-leave to the same element. How does that work? Here's what happens. So you've got a view here. Angular is going to duplicate this element. And in its duplication, like that, this is what's going to happen. When that view state changes, it's going to duplicate this element. Then inside of this view is the outgoing content where it's going to apply that class ng-leave. To this one, it's going to load the new content that's coming out and it's going to apply a class of ng-enter. Once that duration is exhausted, this duration right here, it's going to remove that. And that's what's happening in the DOM. So if you understand that that's what's happening, these pieces fall into place. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm saying when, and this is SAS, but what I'm saying is that when ng-enter is applied to main, then inside of the music class, which is something buried deep or not so deep within that view container, then I'm going to use my SAS mixin called effect. That SAS mixin is applying that with what I passed in as fade in up, which corresponds to the animate.css library. And that's how this works. Now, that sounded like a lot of stuff, fairly convoluted, but you can see how clean this actually is. I could apply unique custom animations to multiple uh, elements inside of this, and it will animate. Um, and I can apply as many as I want, custom transitions, it'll take care of it. But let's take a look at what's actually happening in the DOM and why I've made this 35 seconds. Let's pull this up. I want you to watch the DOM right here. There's our main view container right there. Okay. Now when I click this button, pay attention to what's happening right here. There's that duplication. You've got the exact same thing. Notice the classes that's occurring. This is happening for 35 seconds. So the timer has started, and it's keeping that on. Now the animate.css animate library animations only run for a second, so, the tr so those animations are already done. But that 35 seconds is what's applying these right here. So once the 35 seconds is exhausted, these classes will get removed, and the two view containers will uh, there only be one. But that's what's actually happening. So you can see here, once the 35 seconds comes up, these will disappear. And there you go. Now we're back to one view container. So I want to recap again kind of what's all happening here. Now the way you structure your application doesn't really matter. Don't worry about all the extra stuff that's in here. You can organize these pieces as much as you want. But I'm going to run, quickly run through this all again so you can see exactly what makes this up. You bring in the animate.css file, however you want, into your project you're going to have your view container right here. In this case, I have one. You could have many. The concept's all the same. Whenever there's a state transition, this process will occur. So in this case, uh, when a state changes, Angular UI Router specifically is also going to look at the view container. It's going to look at the class that's assigned to that view container. Then it's going to inspect what CSS is applied to that class. It's going to look for a transition as a property, a CSS rule for that class, and get its duration that it's set to. Then what it's going to do is it's going to apply, uh, it's going to duplicate this view and populate the duplicated one with the incoming content and keep the outgoing content in this other one. This is why what's confusing, or at least what's confusing to me, is you end up with these two view containers temporarily, and then you end up with stuff stacked on top of each other. And the linchpin for understanding 
is that when that class gets applied, you're not manipulating the view container. That's why there are no rules right here. You're manipulating the content inside of what's loaded. And that was the key to understanding of how to successfully do this, at least in this technique. There are some JavaScript ways too to hook into this, um, but this is a fairly clean way of doing it. Um, so you're saying when enter is applied, meaning whatever the incoming content is, go off and find some selector and then do some effect. Now this could be anything. You can replace this line with your own CSS that does its own animation. It doesn't matter. It'll affect that, that element. Um, I'm using SAS with a mix in with animate.css. This line you can forget and just type in your animation code right here and it will do it to this. Um, make sure that the duration of whatever that animation code is is less than this. Uh, and that's what it's doing. Here's ng enter, um, and I'm also affecting uh, what happens on welcome, which now that I look at it should probably be up here. We can get rid of that. Uh, so anyway, and then same thing for leave. And we can just take this, put it up there, get rid of that. Probably have the same effect. I go back. Yeah, same effect. So, and I'm, this is the whole setup. I'm using a Yeoman setup with an Angular generator and it's using browser sync and all, all kinds of fun stuff. But that is as complex as it gets right there. And so if you understand that it's actually applying, that it's duplicating the view container, adding these classes for whatever duration you specify on that view container, and then your animation code goes in here, then as you transition, it will work. Here's the other really important key factor in this is whatever transition that you use needs to actually use CSS transforms. And the reason is, is because oftentimes people try to animate position or uh, margins or opacity or, or visibility and that those things affect normal flow, you know, top to right, left to bottom, how elements actually flow in the document. So if you had three squares all horizontally laid out and you go, I want the bigger, the middle one to just get bigger. It's not good. You don't want it to push other things on uh, away from it. You want um, the deformation, the animation to occur to an element without affecting the flow, the normal document flow of other elements. CSS transforms do that. The only thing they will affect is the overflow, um, but they won't affect um, any kind of um, any kind of flow, which is why you don't see any kind of like snapping or where one view, even though you have two views, one is like stacked on top of the other and, and you don't get that. And it's because we're using um, CSS transforms. Uh, so that's a that's a key thing. So some of the critical things to understand, again, just want to recap this, is it's going to duplicate this view, incoming is going to be added to the outgoing for whatever duration you apply to that particular view container. It's going to apply these classes. Then you affect elements or classes or things that are inside of the loaded content with animation code that uses CSS transforms. That is, that is the process that you go through to get um, effective uh, transitions as you're going from state to state in regards to the view um, layer. And you can use GreenSock, the GreenSock animation library, and Egghead.io has got a lot of good videos on how to actually use that with, uh, with this technique as well. But this is just down and dirty quick stuff. And you can see that if you're, in this case I'm using animate.css which has lots of good stock uh, animations, but if I wanted this to rotate or spin or fade or bounce or whatever, I just replace that one word. Um, and that's why I like it is because in this case, you don't have to invent the animation. You know, fade it up, you know, fade out down. I can replace these with any one of a hundred different things and get those. Whereas if you're using some other technique, you have to create them yourself, uh, which is, which is, you know, time consuming. So I hope this clarifies at least conceptually how you're going to do like state changes with UI router. Um, but you know, if you have questions, shoot me an email, follow me on Twitter. It's Twitter is jchaneo one and I'll tweet out some tips and stuff. 
but uh, there you go. And so if you do this, granted this animation is particularly ugly, but it gets the point across where you can just kind of toggle back and forth between different views and does its animation and stuff. And so for the most part within you know Angular apps, you're talking about animating on state changes where the views are swapping as opposed to individual elements. But uh, there you go.